the Joe Rogan experience. I know a lady who lives in the Arctic Circle. She lives like 200 miles above the Arctic Circle. She's on that show Life Below Zero. You ever see uh -huh. that show? But she can come out when she wants. She can come back. She flies back. She, she was in the studio. Not this one, the old one. But she was sitting right where you're sitting. Like, you know, she's a normal person. I can't even take a cruise. No? No. But you were going to cruise in the Congo. Well, that's a river. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't take a cruise boat because I can't be isolated in the middle of the ocean with people I don't think are really on the ball. Like, I can't do it. I the, think that's where, like, the next plague starts, I think. Does happen sometimes. Yeah, they get the norovirus or whatever on a cruise ship. And what if someone's just really into chucking people over the side? <laughs> Like, that's your move. You just take a cruise. I like those wait. people that survive that. I like the stories of the people the that get they, sh they fall off a cruise off ship. The... Really? And they get found. Who the fuck finds them? They're in a shipping lane. They get found. Really? I love those stories. I've never heard those stories. Yeah. I always thought you're fucked Can you though. imagine? Could you? There's like almost nothing <sighs> that can fuck you worse than to fall off a cruise ship. But right. these people, they, they survive it. You have to think of how long can you swim? Right. I mean, it's like 13 hours or I don't know. How long can you tread water? Well, you can tread water longer than that. I don't know. Sure you can. I sink like a rock. You'll be hallucinating. Right. But you'll still be treading water. <laughs> you just be, your tissue would be tearing apart. What I heard one guy talk about was how he saw like, he had the illusion of seeing boats come by and talk to him. And he, like, talked to people that were saying, just hang on, hang on longer. It was all imaginary. Like, none of it was real. But he was having, like, a full sort of trippy virtual reality experience with his hallucinations that kept him alive longer. They were, like, his subconscious. But they would come, in his mind, in vessels and, like, stop and talk to him, throw him something, Whoa. motivate him. That's crazy. I guess you could get that if you go into one of those... Um, Sensory deprivation tanks or something. I have, have one. That. Oh, you do? I have one right over here. Shut up. Fuck yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Do you do that regularly? Yeah. Do you have hallucinations? Yeah, definitely. Like what? Tell me. Um, the, the most extreme one, I was in the jungle, and um, there was some people that were native to this place. They were dressed in um, Western clothes, though, like T-shirts and shorts, but they're barefoot, which is often the case, though, unfortunately. <clears throat> a lot of people that live in these indigenous uh, villages, they wear, like, Under Armour shirts and shit that they, someone gets them. Somehow oh. or another, it gets down to them. Missionaries maybe sometimes bring them. Um, but they were speaking in a language that I understood, but it was in English, and I don't speak anything other than English. And when they were talking, I was listening to them. I was amongst them, and I was listening to them, and they were speaking in this very different language. And then I realized, like, holy shit, I can understand their language. But I realized that in English, and then, poof, I popped out of the, the spell. Like, my freaking out about it brought me... It was all like, no, 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 don't go away! Don't go away! Ah, fuck! It's like, it was so extreme. It was so, I could smell the, the rain. I could feel the moisture in the air. I could see the leaves all around me. I could hear the sounds of the forest. And these people in the rainforest just hanging out, talking this, uh, it was totally uneventful, nothing was happening, but they were talking in this language that I absolutely knew what they were saying. They were going back and forth and communicating, and I was following the conversation in their language, thinking in their language. And then I realized it, and I woke up. How do you interpret that? I think, first of all, it's tripping balls, right? There's that. There's being in that tank. On what? Uh... <sighs> I think it was edible pot. I've done a bunch of different things in the tank, but mostly it's edible pot. Pot edibles has a distinctly hallucinatory effect at high doses, especially when you close your eyes and you're laying back and just like just just letting visuals take place. Um, also, I think it's entirely possible that we have genetic memory, and I think it's entirely possible that, like. There's certain things that people pass down to their children. Like there's certain traits that my kids have that I watch in them and I go, okay, how do you, why are you so into this? Are you so into this because you just happen to be into this? Are you into this because you, because I'm into this and somehow or another got into my genes and passed on to your little tiny body and now you're developing with this like hunger for certain, certain types of activities. So it's like it. literally in their cellular yes. level of Well, knowing. we don't know, we don't know what's transferred. We don't know how much of like 
what, like people have certain instincts, right? People are afraid of spiders, afraid of snakes. Why? Why is that? It's probably some memory. Probably somewhere along the line, some memory got transferred into your DNA. Well, the question is like, how much gets in there? Until I told my nine-year-old daughter, I, I thought probably very little. I was probably it was just like physical traits and that's it. But her mind is so much like my mind. Like, and especially like her obsession with things. I've never seen a little kid so obsessed with things. I'm like, this is me in a nine-year-old girl's body. Like, this is fucking crazy. And talking to people that have musical talent or people that have artistic talent and their children seem to have an aptitude for this, like an un unusual aptitude, almost as if they're trying to re-remember it rather than learn it. Ooh, I like what you just said. I like that switcheroo uh, there. I think there's something that gets trans. I don't. I don't know how much of it is readable data, but I think there's so much information that gets through your cells. And then I think the child is faced with their own data, right? Their own life experiences, their own genetics, their own hormones, and all these different things that are happening around them. But I think underneath all that, it's entirely possible there remains some very, very distant memories, which is why people survived as long as they did, because you could transfer some knowledge onto the kids. Of I think it's probably yeah. less today than before, because the, world, the world's so safe. Everything's nerfed. You don't have to worry about getting eaten by leopards. Like it's a, it's a totally different environment we're living in. So less of it gets in there, but I think there's probably still somewhere in the operating system, if you went into DOS and started sneaking around, you'd find some weird code from like different languages that you spoke 10,000 years ago, or you know, who knows, whatever life experience. Like, why are kids scared of monsters? That was another thing that they were talking about once in one of these things. Like, they're scared of monsters because monsters used to be a real thing that you had to worry about because they ate people. Like, cats, like leopards and jaguars and shit. Like, that was a real problem. So little kids, they're not scared of bullets or, you know, they're scared of fucking monsters. That's what every little kid's scared of, the dark and monsters. Because that's, in our genetic memory, probably some leftover shit from when we got eaten a lot. In trees. Yeah, in trees, right? So falling and predation. Yeah, yeah both. <laughs>